I love secrets and I'm sure you too. I have told you some secrets about the entire for public speaking, right? So you need to have content, communication, confidence. Do you remember I had made this triangle of secret of public speaking? Now I'm going to share you some other secrets. Secret of good delivery. And so much so I love secret, I'm going to reveal them one by one to you. What is the secret of giving a good speech in totality? So good delivery in totality. Okay. So, when you are giving a speech, you will have to set the stage. Just recollect, I don't know how many of you all actually have performed on stage other than public speaking. Let's say you've gone for a dance, uh, you have danced on stage, you have sung a song, or you have participated in some skit. When you do that, you just go and perform, right? But someone is there to set the stage. If you are in a skit, they would put those beautiful backgrounds. Um, if the skit is all about flowers, fruits, trees, or animals, whatever it may be, you will see all those settings are being done. That is what setting the stage is. How And it looks so good to the eyes when the set is beautifully, uh, the stage is beautifully set, so sorry. How do you, as speakers set your stage. You necessarily need not go and change the background and all that. When it's setting the stage, it means you do some preparations. And we have seen lots of preparations that we should do as speakers. It would kind of complement whatever you have learned so far or comprehend whatever you have learned so far. Okay? It's just that I am telling this repeatedly in other, in other words or reframing my sentence so that it becomes more and more clearer to you. So do not get overburdened and feel that, I think this is something similar that I've listened to. That is what I'm trying to do. I am trying to seed in thoughts in different ways because that is what I've taught you, that you should try to put across your point in different ways. But you will always find that there, are some, there is something else that you are learning, okay? So now let's look at how do you set your stage. It's a performance that you are giving. You are a performer. When you are talking, conversing, whatever you are doing, you are a performer. So now let's see how do you set the, set the stage for yourself. Set your own stage. And that stage is the platform that you are talking on. There are certain steps that we will follow if we have to set the stage. Now when you are uh, performing uh, in a skit, you are playing the role of, let's say, a king or a queen or a prince or a princess or a tree or a bird, animal, whatever it may be. The settings play an important role. And how beautifully the people who set the stage do so. So, in, and this is your stage. You will have to set it. So, we, we will have to be very, very careful in choosing the right props, in choosing the right settings. So, just take that as a premise that you are setting a stage for yourself. Okay? And performing. What is step number one? And this is before you deliver your speech. What do you do? You include your attitude. So when it say includes, it's the speaker includes. Include your attitude about delivery, degree of preparation, your confidence level and various non-verbal messages. So this particular step comes before you start your speech. The readiness, it, it shows your preparedness. And what does it include? What is the attitude that you have towards your entire delivery? Okay, what is it that you've thought of? Do you, do, you have, do you already have made up your mind that I am a confident speaker or you certain, have certain doubts, okay? Are you confident of the content that you've written or you feel that there is something more that can be added? Are you sure that you've done a research on your audience or you feel that maybe not, okay? So your preparedness, your attitude, degree of prepare, preparation, your confidence level and you can always assess your confidence level by asking questions to you. Am I ready with my topic? Am I ready with the main idea? So you have now seen what are the steps of preparation of your speech, delivery of your speech. 
So now start ticking. Okay, this is done. Create an index. This point number one is done. Point number two is done. Point number three, I need to uh, improve upon. Point number four, kind of done. So when you do this, automatically you feel that, okay, something is missing, let me recreate. Or if everything is to the T, done properly, now you know, okay, I'm confident. I will go and give my best speech today. Okay, so that attitude, that preparedness, that behavior towards you, yourself, is the step one of setting the stage. And non-verbal messages. So, when you are thinking of delivering a speech, and this is the before the speech, what kind of non-verbal uh, messages you are throwing to yourself? You yourself will feel that maybe somehow the way I stand is not good. Maybe somehow the way I maintain eye contact is not good. When I talk, most of, like I'm doing now, most of the time I look as if I'm thinking and talking. So you are there. But I'm looking somewhere else and I'm talking. These are the things you have to understand yourself. And this all comes through practice. And this all comes through when you start watching yourself. And with the advent of technology, it's more easier. Earlier, we used to say, go and stand in front of the mirror and talk. That is when you get to see yourself completely. Apart from do doing that, I have also said that you record your video and watch. That gives you an indication, I am not standing properly. Or I'm not maintaining my eye contact properly. I'm not using my hands properly. I do not have a proper stance. All these things you will clearly understand when you are watching yourself. So keep an eye on yourself. That is the preparation you need to do. Nonverbal messages. Now we come to step number two. Step number one is done. Step number two. Taking the stage includes how organized you appear. Okay. How organized you literally are, not only about appearing organized, your stride, your efforts, posture and confidence level and even how friendly and approachable you appear. So now you are on the stage, let's say, how confident you appear on the stage, what kind of efforts you have taken to showcase that you are ready. At times, there are speakers who feel that you are, you are not ready. There are speakers who show, in previous section I told you there are speakers who are, not many, but few, who show, who try to show off. And then you also have a speaker who looks unprepared. So when an audience sees an unprepared speaker, and what are the signs and signals of an unprepared speaker? You will see that they will uh, move around, they will fiddle with some papers, or last moment they will be writing something, they, they feel very nervous at times or they are clenching their palms or doing something. When you see these kind of speakers, you also have a doubt in your mind that will the speaker actually do whatever he is supposed to do? Will he, be, will he be giving that thundering speech or he will be baffling off? So your audience is also looking at you the way you are looking at them. So I had given you a tip that if you want to prepare yourself for a wonderful speech other than the preparations that you have done, you should also go and have a look at the stage. And right before the speech, just try to assess the audience, though you have already done the audience analysis. They also do the same. They see who the speaker is, who are the people who are going to talk, okay? who are the people who have nominated themselves for this debate, speech, elocution, extempore. So when they are looking at you and you feel, you seem to be quivered, you seem to be a little confused, you seem to be unorganized, you seem to be playing with your papers, trying to organize, and while doing so, some papers fall, that is when your audience gets an indication or a signal. We need to be a bit careful because maybe, so they, they form an opinion about yourself. Maybe this will not be a good speech. I mean, whatever the speaker says. Do not let people understand that. Okay? So taking the stage includes how organized you appear, your stride, your posture, your body language, and confidence level. So, before the speech, when you show your confidence, similarly, you will have to show the similar kind of a confidence, maybe on the stage or right before stepping on the stage. Okay? And how approachable, and that's very important. There are speakers who create kind of a boundary. You cannot reach to me. You cannot come to me. And again, I'm making you ready for your future. Do not be that kind of a speaker. Neither be too open nor be too closed. Approachable. Establishing initial audience connection. So this is while you're delivering your speech. 
when you are when the audience is uh, observing you and you see that and you appear to be confident you appear to be organized you appear to be ready for that speech in the right frame of mind they have already formed an opinion depending on whatever you have showed them now when you are on the stage and they have an opinion and let's say they have a positive opinion about you they would try to connect with you okay so establishing initial audience connection happens has already happened in step number 2 Let's say you've already built a good opinion about yourself to your audience. Now you start building the connection and we have seen how to build connection so I will not spend much time. You will start building the connection when you start to speak by uh, giving a, an awesome introduction or by telling a story or by looking at them and smiling and then saying I feel so glad to be here today. So praising your audience. you start building that confidence and they will easily take it because they have already observed you and seen you as a confident speaker you've given those cues those signals to them stand before audience so this is again part of non verbal feet firmly you know planted so when i say firmly planted do you cannot see my whole body but you can see i'm standing straight so my both my feet are firmly planted on the ground neither am i standing like this nor like this so that that creates confidence so i have to stand straight both the feet together all right exude friendly confidence through posture and poise how am i standing how am i moving okay so that shows my confidence and that also shows the openness that i have towards my audience all right establish rapport through i i've been keep telling you about these non verbals it's equally important as your verbals are as your diction language words stories that you use equal importance you should be giving to your body language the eye contact that you maintain the smile that you wear in your face the the connection that you build you know looking at each of your audience i mean the the group and then nodding your head this nodding your head shows that you are trying to connect with them okay establish rapport through eye and eye contact is one of the most important things the other day one of the chil- one of the students was talking to me and he said that i'm a very good speaker i mean i can rate myself so you do self evaluation right he says talking part is fine i don't know why the moment i see people and my eyes beat with their eyes i forget or i f- start feeling a bit nervous but as a communicator i'm good i said then you have not fulfilled the basics of communication your verbal communication is good you need to work upon your non verbal communication maintaining eye contact is very important there was a friend of mine uh, i'm talking about 9 2000 when i finished my intermediate and then that is when you start looking for options for graduation for engineering whatever you want to prepare of course engineering preparation if you want to get into iit you will start doing quite early so this friend of mine is a very meritorious student very very meritorious student very good in science so that is how he uh, that is why he was preparing for iit je he got through he got through in uh, one of in one of the most prestigious iits then he was called for an interview and in interview subject matter wise he is excellent when he had to the entire interview went well according to him he was not selected and then he said that some i don't know what went wrong and then he went and tried to find out he found out that there was a disconnect that the interviewer felt when he tried to maintain eye contact okay of course he was given chance and then he was selected that's a different story altogether but that feedback is very important and that is how he realized he said that not only communication or your knowledge is important your verbal communication and knowledge is important your non verbal is also important now he he is a very confident speaker now he has grown and risen up to such a level he talks to people daily he conducts meeting he motivates his team but that one experience wherein he was almost about to get rejected taught him a lesson that maintaining eye contact is very important okay so you should always maintain eye contact and give that and build that rapport using your eye contact the sparkle in your eyes okay calmly wait each and every audience member to be ready to hear your words now this is very important i had i don't know whether i've shared with you the first speech experience of mine i think i have i was so overwhelmed 
as I told you in the earlier lessons that I wanted to go and speak. I was ready with my speech. I was confident with that mindset that I have to perform, I have to go. And I was in so much of hurry that my teacher complained later to my father in the PT meeting and my school, though it was a very small school from a very small town I am, but the quality of education was really good and they wanted to focus on each and every child, on every development of theirs. And they told, um, my teacher told my, my dad and my mom also that she was ready, she was prepared. I don't know what happened, why, why was she so much in so much of hurry? Even before stepping on the stage, she started talking. The audience had hardly sat on there, so we had a, uh, a small auditorium. And they were all sitting on the floor, not chairs. My, my friends, my seniors, my juniors, whoever. I was in standard one then. They were all sitting on the, so I have to, when I'm talking, I'm not looking at them like this. I have to look at them like this because I'm on an elevated platform, they're sitting down. All right. I knew all of these things, I have to maintain eye contact from a very small age. However, I was in so much of hurry to start my speech, few of the, I was the first speaker. Few of the students had not sat also, were not ready also. The judge had not even called out my name properly. I started talking. Okay, give time to your audience to settle down. After every speech, let's say there, is a there are a series of speeches or you're part of some conference, you're giving some talk on some topic that you've chosen. After every speaker, there is a time given for the other speaker to step in and for the audience to all, because they're sitting and in the same position, they, they also need to move, they also need to go for a bio break, whatever it may be. Give them time to settle down. That is what this line means, ready to hear your words. And even after they have settled down, you should try and see that now they are ready to listen to you. At least hear you out, if not listen. Listening is, again, it depends on how um, grasping uh, and speaker you are and how, how motivating a speaker you are. Then they will listen to you. Hearing is at least they can input something in their ears, that whatever you are talking. Give them time and let them be ready to hear you out. That is when you should start. And that is where you should take these pauses and tem uh, the tempo and pace and pause that we have learned. You have to apply whenever you see that the audience doesn't seem to be ready to hear you out. Now coming to the step number four. And this is where the opening um, section that we did that this is how you should open your speech comes into picture. Speaking your first words. And just like the way you feel nervous or it's very tough to take that plunge of speaking, the, the utterance of first words also equally scary at times. Maybe I can, the middle part and the ending I can take care of, but I really don't know how to start. So go back to that section wherein I had told how to open a talk. Speaking your first words, how you speak it, what you say creates that conducive environment for them to listen to you, okay? First spoken words, know your first two lines. So it could be the first word that you have uttered, first spoken lines that you have said, or the entire paragraph that you have said. But when you start with the words, how effective, how um, influential you sounded, or how, how good you sounded to your audience, how quickly you could grab them, that's very important. Please go back and see the open, how to open a conversation video and you will get lots of cues for this. Project the words using plenty of vocal variety. Go back to the video wherein I have said that you have to use your diction, you have to use your pace, your pitch, your intonations, your loudness, all of these things. So you have to keep in mind how you open and when you open, how you utter the words, the emphasis that you give, the loudness that you have in your voice, the pitch, the syllables that you use, all of these things you have to keep in mind. Be careful to not look down at your cards and break the connection with the audience. So at times, you will be allowed when, you are, when you've grown up and you are allowed to speak in conferences, seminars, and you can carry some cards with notes, just the, the topics, the main topics or key points. At times, you forget words. And while you are talking, you try to pull out those uh, cards and then see. Or maybe you're holding your cards in your hand. There are people who hold these cards and it's not visible also to the audience. Seasoned speakers, they hold some cards in their hands. If they have to speak for one hour, two hours, they hold certain points in their hand, not the whole paragraph. They write certain important points. That helps them in recollecting what they have to say. So they refer. Now, while you are talking and then referring to your cards, you will obviously lose the connect. 
So do not try to look what you what you've written in your cards unless you get a break or unless you take a pause. Maybe someone is saying something and then quickly, and that also needs a lot of strategy. You look at the card and then close it. This is only when you grow up or at this stage also when you go to any platform wherein you have to give a lengthy speech, and you have you can have an access to the notes that you are carrying. Okay, so do not look down upon your notes or your cards. Now. the steps that we saw you have to be very careful in following those steps now once you have followed those steps you should look at something else called controlling the energy all right how do you control your energy and your audience's energy this is this also forms the part of your secrets of effective delivery how do you control the energy in the room speaker energy related to and about the presentation or speech for that matter it could be either the presentation or your speech okay all right your energy you need to control your energy also that over enthusiasm you have to be calming it down related to the the speech or the topic that you are talking on are you excited or dreading prepared or unprepared so that control you need to have and it it all is here you can only control yourself if you use your mind to talk to you and tune your mind that you are prepared all right and that is how you control your energy if you feel that i'm over excited control it bring it down bring down the energy which is like uh, how many times have you seen that the bulb in your house bursts when the power is more it bursts when the power is less the the shine the light that is it becomes very dim that is the kind of energy flow that you also have in your body and you emanate that is you transfer the energy or you bring out the energy in the form of whatever actions we do the energy gets whatever we eat the calorie gets converted into our energy helps our body to do that okay now when you are speaking that over energy can backfire and that under energy lack of energy can also backfire so maintain a moderate energy control your energies if you feel that it's overshooting or overpowering and your energy outside the presentation your health or your stressors that impact your personal energy now one is of course the energy related to your speech how prepared you are how uh, confident you look and then the energy that is associated with how you feel inside your body all right just think if you have not had a good sleep or the food that you ate makes you very uncomfortable or due to some reasons there is some discomfort in your body irrespective of whether you are really thoroughly prepared or not you might falter there something will pull you back okay so that is the energy that you need to control not only the energy related to your speech but also to your body what you eat how you eat uh, the the amount of sleep that you have had all these things is under your control and when you are delivering a lecture i mean before that you should be taking care of all of these things this also impacts your performance your delivery that was about the speaker's energy i mean about your energy how do you control the audience's energy and just think how does your teacher control you when you all start shouting at one go you all are too excited super excited or you are too low okay so your teacher should be given a salute for controlling your energies collective energy of the of the group so the group that you're talking to could be very excited in general or could be very very lethargic at times you will feel like i have given all my efforts but somehow this group is so dull it's so dull but how do you control that versus individual group members energy so there could be the the entire group could be very very dull or very very enthusiastic or some of the group members in the group could be very very excited or or enthusiastic or very dull it's up to you how to control them but how do you do that how do you try to control them if the entire group is over excited you can crack a joke and tell them hey guys cool down cool down let us just focus on whatever we are saying whatever we are talking uh, let's just not get derailed okay and then since they like you they have started liking you because you've already taken care of the previous steps they will listen to you now if you see that some of them is still not listening to you uh, not disturbing you but they seem to be disinterested ignore them likewise if you see that the entire hall is very silent doesn't even feel like moving because they lack energy 
that is when you have to use your positive energy and pass it on to them then maybe say okay roll off your sleeves like this i feel and at times you see you see speakers standing like this though they have to maintain their stance they will roll their sleeves and they'll say i now feel let's play a game because you want to bring in energy and how many times have, have your teachers done that when they see that the energy is very low they'll make you do some exercise they'll make you stand then they'll make you move so that the energy that is the, the negative energy that, uh, sorry the lesser energy that you have in your body they are trying to bring in some positivity now if the whole group is like that you can do it now if you see that very few people are there just like over enthusiastic people ignore them even this pocket small few people unless they are very uh, disturbing ignore them now there could be some people who got really negative energy inside them individuals really really negative at times if situation arises to such an extent that you will have to ask them to maybe leave the room please do that but that's the last resort ignoring these people is the best thing that you can do okay do not focus on them focus on the people who are listening to you because that's the major chunk the lesser chunk who are maybe a bit inactive or overactive just leave them for a while because that is going to uh, disturb you that is going to control your flow which you don't want or stop your flow which you don't want then room energy so you have controlled your energy your audience's energy now your room energy this is something that at times is not under your control but you can request like in uh, i had gone to deliver a speech in a uh, in mba college so i was an evaluator for in mba colleges they do these mock interviews so i was one of the panelists of the mock interview somehow the room temperature so it was not a very large room it was a smaller room and we were talking to children in small pocket size so 10 10 12 like this there were other panelists also with me and i could feel that one child one student she was she was unable to answer me the questions that i was asking her and it was an interviewing session that we were doing i gave a speech and then we were into uh, interviewing this child mock interview i saw that uh, she is she is unable to give an answer and every time that she is we are asking a question though she has knowledge she is looking somewhere in the room okay and then she is trying to find out uh, i thought that what is this girl trying to find out actually why is she looking here and there and then she i saw her spotting the ac that is when i realized that this girl is feeling very cold then i requested the so every room was allotted some uh, some of these staff members who were who were holding obviously the remote and i asked them to control the room temperature so if it's in your hands you can do it if it's in, not in your hand then maybe you can request that can you do this for me all right so the size temperature lighting setup try to if you feel that you need some changes it's in your hand it's it's in your control if you request people will not say a no to it okay if you feel that this setting is not good for me to talk the room is uh, too large and the audience size is too small they are sitting at the back i can't I'll, i'll not be able to reach to them tell them that can we change the setting can we and i've seen speakers doing that i've seen many people doing that because they don't feel comfortable let's say the platform is elevated they will not be able to look at the audience directly they'll have to look like this then they will say can can i can i be brought to the same level so these kind of settings is under your control you can change it however if you are at this stage and you are going and delivering a extempore or whatever it may be wherein you cannot change settings okay move on but try to because this is going to help you in influencing the feeling of the presentation so try to bring about that change you cannot say that no i, I don't want to stand here and talk the the asks of yours should not be irrelevant should be relevant you can always say that can i change this microphone it's not i'm not comfortable do those things do not take everything at your stride and say yeah, yeah i can do it if you think that it can hamper your presentation tell the uh, organizer or whoever there is can i get these small changes done okay that is going to increase your confidence because this small minor thing can change your entire presentation that is why i am asking you to take those small steps so controlling the energy is very important now moving on so the third thing that you're going to see the, we we saw the steps then we saw the controlling of energy now we are going to see speak up now that you are talking how do you talk i don't know how many of you all have heard of this word called diaphragm or not it's there is a, a muscle here in our body 
you should try to talk using that muscle of yours when you are shouting then you have no not shouting when you are bringing in loudness in your voice rather than straining your throat try to bring the voice and you have you must have heard singers telling this that uh, in hindi they say that pet se awaz nikalo it's similar to that try to bring your voice from within from inside that will not strain your vocal cords what happens if you try to bring in loudness every time by using your throat at one point in time your throat will give up you will feel your you will feel very dry and then the quiver sound will come ah karke a sound will come that is why it's it's always advisable that use try to use this this portion to push that air and try to speak using this diaphragm of your body because it ensures that words are fueled by your breath okay it's fueled by your breath and resonate from deep within you it's coming from inside and singers will be able to relate to it better because that is what your teachers tell you sing the, the teachers who teach you singing as a skill tell you that start singing from here and there are singers who say that sing from your nabi i mean that from that within you have to take the sound out because over time over time when you speak through your throat you will get some disturbances here can damage your vocal cords chilla chilla ke the more you shout using your throat or the more you use these intonations and all that just by using your throat and not not this portion of your body you are damaging your vocal cords if you want to become seasoned speakers you have to speak daily you have to go and talk to people daily not only about speaking it's about conversation talking you are talking to people daily okay now every time that you have to talk you are using all your energy you talking from your throat that is going to kind of damage your vocal cords so try to use this portion try this once the session gets over once you are free try to bring in the voice from your from this portion from from let's say in easy terms stomach all right okay now another part in um, speaking up is there is a direct correlation okay there is a direct correlation between controlling your nervous energy and speaking up so all these nervous energy that you have and what you talk there is a direct correlation that is in simple words how you tune your mind your nerves and how you speak has a correlation so the moment you are calm down the moment you have cooled down your nerves and then talking it will help you but if your nerves are not cooled down if you have not controlled your nervous energy your vocal energy will not help you the more you project your words competently the more confident you feel okay so the more competent competently means using all your competence using all your positive body energy and your efforts that will make you look confident all right now once you have spoken once you are already start when you when you are speaking try to sweeten it not sugar coat it do not sugar coat it make it a little sweet how do you make it a little sweet by the way i am doing by uh, using words which sound very sweet to your ears by changing your tone you can make uh, your audience feel very loved and cared for plan ways to capitalize on every opportunity that you get so if this is an opportunity sweeten your voice do not sound very harsh sweeten means sound very sweet when you talk sound sweet when you talk look for ways to use your voice and body as you deliver the words but don't stop there so you should sound sweet not only with your voice you should not sound confident not only with your voice but also using your entire body the energy the body outlook everything and when you do that do not stop do not stop it there continue it's not that now i'm being very sweet and then after that i sound very harsh very rude okay that that maintains maintenance of their entire sweetness or your body energy should be continuing look for ways to activate each of the senses for your audience so when i say that you should sound sweet there are how many senses are there five senses so make them visualize whatever you say and we have seen all of these things so i will not repeat myself with your comparison contrasting with your illustrations make them visualize then make them 
uh, when you're talking about, let's say, a, a, a good aromatic food, and since I'm from F&B industry, every day we talk only food, and then we say, my God, can you smell the aroma? Can you smell the freshness? And even though you cannot smell it, but you can feel it, okay? So that sensation, that sensible uh, organs that your body has, the five senses, make them, make your audience use them. And then, obviously, they're using the eyes and ears to listen to you. And then you say, don't you get a tickling effect in your tongue? Just imagine, when you talk nicely to people, how nice does it sound? The words flow from your mouth. So then you're using other senses. So use all these senses. So the meaning is, try to use all these senses in your speech and then deliver your speech so that not only connection but expression is also fulfilled and you also influence and inspire. That is the ultimate game that we, uh, aim that we have. Okay. And finally, what you have to do is engage, engage and engage. So we saw there are certain steps, then we saw the controlling of energy. Now what we're going to see is how do we engage. We know how we engage. So whatever points you have learned about expressions and connection is actually helping you to engage with your audience. This we have already dealt with. Stories. I have taught you six storytelling techniques. Stories, your personal story, your experience. When you talk about your experience, your audience can connect well and can engage with you well because they might also have faced similar situations. Fictional story can also work, but your personal experience is something that they would like to hear. Okay? Share personal stories that includes details. And these details are about who, what, where, why, and how. These are the techniques that we use. One, two, three, four, five. WHW techniques in asking questions or sharing your story. Then use this. Who did it to you? What happened? What was the, uh, when was it that it happened to you? Where did it happen to you? Why did it happen to you? How did it happen to you? When you narrate all of these things with your personal experiences, your audience gets engaged. How and how has got repeated anyways. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. You should not be showing your weakness, but if you feel, because when you're telling your personal stories, you kind of open up. When you open up, you kind of become vulnerable, okay? Do not be scared. Vulnerable means, uh, in, in simple English, vulnerable means that people can attack you. Not attack you like with sword and knife and all that. You become vulnerable because you've shared your stories, you've shared your, shared your secrets. Then people can take it in their advantage. That is what vulnerability means. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable because you are trying to engage with them, you're trying to connect with them, you're trying to express yourself. That is why you've told the story. It's not a testimony that you are giving. That, yeah, this is my story, now go and fight the case in a court of law. No. So, if, if you think that this is something that I'm opening up and I'm trying to, and I'm opening my uh, book, my life's book to people, let that be. They cannot do anything. They can only learn from you. So, do not think of the negative things. Think of the positive things that can happen when you share your stories. The positive thing is, you will be able to engage with your audience. Probing questions. So when you are engaging with your audience, and I've told you several times that asking right questions, and we have seen it, so I'll not dwell much on that. Probing questions means probe them to answer. Do not force them to answer, but ask them relevant questions that you get an answer from them. Okay? Ask probing questions that require the audience to conjure up their own experience and connection to the content. Now let's say I'm telling a story, my personal story, that I was under depression. There was a time when I was under severe depression. Is anyone in the hall here? who has also faced similar situations, probing question. And then you will find a ha hand raising up, yes, I have also been through this kind of a situation. That is how you engage. And then there'll be others who would also share their stories. Then other things that you need to engage. And this, not always you get uh, an access to or you're allowed to carry. If you are allowed to carry, use it. Incorporate objects that demonstrate or illustrate content from your speech. So, if you cannot use any of these props, use your hands. Your bo entire body can be used to show that prop. Okay? If you're talking about a clown, show how a clown does. If you're talking about a monkey, show how a monkey does. That is what the prop is. You might not carry a monkey's image with you or a monkey toy with you. But you can enact and show how a monkey does. That is how you engage with your audience. 
physical activities. Inject activities that require at least two audience members to move from sitting in their seat. This you will uh, do to again reduce or increase the positive energy, but do that if need be, do that. These are some animations that you do, okay? Make them move. Uh, yes, my friend sitting here uh, wearing this yellow shirt, may I know your name please? Can you just, you know, warm up a bit? So if you do these kind of animations, again, with caution, every time you cannot be successful in that. Make, when you make one person move from his chair, no, you will see other people also adjusting themselves on the chair. It's just because you want to engage with them. Playing games and all that or um, making them do some activity, this can happen when you are uh, maybe a trainer or a large audience, you are in a seminar, you can make them do some activities. But when you are doing an extemporaneous speech or a one minute speech, these things you cannot do. So, but then what am I preparing you for? I'm preparing you for your future. I'm trying to develop that mindset of a speaker. So you can use these tools and uh, technologies or traits when you grow up or maybe when at this stage only you get a chance to get into these kind of speech types. Okay. Now the final thing is use your speech wisely. Try to talk sense, make sense to people. Respect your audience. Respect whoever is there in the hall listening to you and ultimately have fun. Do not make this a uh, tussle for you. Do not make this too tough for you and your audience. Have fun. N not necessarily means that crack jokes and all that, but have fun. They should feel that you are enjoying while you are talking. And if they feel that you are overstressed or you are trying to finish off this speech, trying to say something so that you can just get away with that uh, situation, then the entire purpose of delivering a good speech is lost. So, have fun when you are on stage, enjoy the speech that you are delivering, show your happiness, show your acceptance, recognize people, compliment them, be happy. When you do all of these things, the entire the purpose of your speech delivery gets fulfilled. So I am sure next time you are on stage, you will use at least some of these techniques or methods of a foolproof, nice speech delivery. Okay? So, with this, we end this particular lesson. Now we'll go and see something else, which is very exciting. So I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for watching.